Welcome back to Echoes of the Eye. Today we're going to talk about the final village, the Hidden Gorge. It's almost certainly the last real-world location that you explore, because it's hard to find. Everything else you can see from wherever you were exploring before, so you naturally have a progression from the first village to the second village to the reservoir. It's just a very natural setup where you can understand what you're going to explore next because you can see it. So this village, you can't do that. You have to actually go looking for it. And because of that, you're unlikely to go looking for it until you've run out of obvious things to explore, which is why it's the last village. This is important because it turns out that this is your main base of operations for chapter two, the dream world chapter. If you discovered it earlier, you would discover your main base of operations for the second chapter before you'd finished the first chapter, which would be a little bit unnatural and weird. So that's why they have it set up the way they've got it set up. You gotta find it last because it's the beginning of the next chapter. I'll show you how hard it is to find. I know some people who didn't find it until they were told to go look for it. So the problem is that we have been exploring where the water takes us. First village, second village, and then we follow these left paths down into the reservoir here. But if you follow the right paths, you can find the hidden gorge. But following these right paths is really unnatural. It's not a very natural way to explore things, which is why it happens last. And it usually will happen because you look up and see, you know, the path. It could also happen if you just decide to explore every single river pathway. Either way, it's the end of the first chapter and the beginning of the second chapter. It has two jobs to do. The first is to be a good base for the second chapter, which we'll talk about. And the second, it has to be able to um, tell you all of the things that you needed to have learned in the first chapter. It has to give you a good summary. And the reason for that is because it's a safety net. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding? And the reason for that is uh, you need a good safety net. How much the player learned from the first two villages is going to vary. Some players will have already visited several Dream Worlds. Other players will probably be struggling to even figure out that an artifact exists, because so far we can only get the one from the first village in that kind of house off to the side. Therefore, this third village, this final village, needs to tell everybody what's up, so that nobody gets confused and everybody has the same basic level of competency at the core mechanics. in. There we are. You can see how unnatural that felt. That's why this is the last village that you're likely to find. Here on the ground floor, there are two paths you can take, but one of them leads to nothing, so we won't bother with it. This path leads us to a functioning elevator. That path leads us to a broken elevator. We'll talk about that later. Or broken broken elevator pad, at least. We're going to move pretty fast because we do got a lot to talk about. So this is a very big, convoluted setting. It's the largest and most confusing of the villages. And, uh, yeah. Good news is that there's really only one way we can go. Left. From here we could go up or we could go right. I think most players will choose to go up. Let me tell, you know, tell me what you decided to do the, your first time you played. Oh, look. This is a familiar sight. Even the uh, least observant player will by now know that they need a light for the slideshows. The most observant players will realize that they can go down into the dream world there, but I don't know whether they would. I think they would probably want to explore the rest of this setting first. So we'll go into this lopsided uh, uh, slideshow room, take a look around. There is our slideshow. Oh, hello, just kind of sitting out here in the open. Now this artifact is basically useless. Um, you're never gonna use it. This is like the worst place possible to actually get an artifact 
but they're telling you that this is the artifact room. This is like, you need the artifacts. The artifacts are important from here on out. Artifacts are chapter two. Get some artifacts. Down here are two uh, slides. This slide just shows us that the bell, the prisoner's chamber that we uh, were working with last chapter, or last episode rather, um, is important. It's globally important. It's the point of the game. Over here, this one summarizes what we should have figured out in the second village. So even if you completely skipped over almost everything you were supposed to learn in the second village, like me, um, you will quickly figure out that this is basically what you were supposed to learn. Here they are building the dream world. It's been burned away, so we can't tell what the, what, that it's a dream world. And then here, they're going to show us how to get in. Grab an artifact and close your eyes. Look at the guy on the right. Hey, I recognize that guy. He had his face scratched out back in the second village. Mm. So, if you completely skip the second village, you will still learn how to use your artifacts. And maybe you didn't even realize that, you know, that's how it would work. I had already figured out, you know, the idea, but I hadn't gotten a chance to test it yet because there were so many fun things to explore. So, um, before I got around to figuring out how to do it by just testing every possibility, I, uh, I found that and it told me. This is across the way from where we came up. See? This is the broken elevator pad. It's not broken from the top. You can lower it straight down. I, always, I, I initially thought it was like a glitch that you could make the elevator move while you weren't in it, but it turns out it's not a glitch. It's how you do several things in this game, including, of course, finding these rooms. This is one of the incinerator rooms. Each of the incinerator rooms contains clues as to what they did with one of the three passwords. Because the uh, um, the lock is three passwords. The lock on the prisoner's door is three passwords. And this shows you what they did with those three passwords. However, you can't actually get any of those passwords. They've all been scratched away. So what you do instead is you learn mechanics about the dream world from this map room, from these, uh, sorry, from these uh, incinerator rooms. Each one of these incinerator rooms has a couple of dream world mechanics in them. Now, if we're talking about safeties, these are safeties. Even if you never find the incinerator room, you're probably going to be able to figure out that these mechanics exist. So in this case, I didn't have to figure them out because I found this incinerator room, but even if you don't find the incinerator room, you're going to stumble across these mechanics using one of the various backup methods of discovering them. So this is a password that he's holding. He passes the password across. He goes away with it. And then we learn that there is an invisible bridge, which there are a couple of ways you could learn about in, you know, if you didn't know this sort of thing. Then we also learn that we can extinguish lights like this, which you can learn just by trial and error. And of course, we learned that this is a door that you can go through if you turn out the lights, which we probably already figured out, but it's a, you know, a backup. We're figuring out all these backups. Backups are incredibly important in this kind of game. You need safety nets because a, some percentage of your players are not going to discover things the first time that you show them, whether because they're not observant or just through bad luck or just reacting differently than you expected to your various clues. Any way you cut it, we're going to have people who absorb things at a different rate, and you absolutely need to have fallbacks. Case in point, here. It's pretty clear that we can't go through that one-way door, so we'll come down here, right? Another one-way door. All right, well, we'll come up here. Go in here. There's nothing in this room. There's no staircase down or anything. How are we supposed to get down there? Well, we can launch our scouts, but what does that accomplish? We can look down there? Is there like a password down there or something? There is no password down there. You're not supposed to use your scout to look for anything. You're supposed to use your scout in the same way we did in the incinerator room. Like that. But this is the only place in the game, these two puzzles in this one location, that uses 
your the light from your um, from your scout like that. I'm not I'm not so confident that a lot of players got this no problem. I'm not. I mean, I I figured it out, but it felt like an awkward solution. I sort of felt like maybe um, maybe I hadn't done it optimally or something. And the problem is that if you don't get those solutions, then you will not be able to get either of these two slideshows if you don't figure out that specific mechanic. I won't say that that first slideshow is critical because there's lots of other ways to discover those elements, but this slideshow is literally the most important slideshow in the game. And sure, you might be thinking, no one's going to overlook that, but I'm not so sure about that. And there's no safety net here. There is, as far as I know, no other way to discover this. There's a second entrance. Something blew a hole in the side of the space station, and you can get in through that hole. That's why this place is such a good operation center for the second chapter, because we can literally come straight here. We don't have to drift down the river at all, we can just come here. But if you don't get that slideshow, I don't believe there's any other way to ever learn about that entrance. Here you can see a building that's clearly emblazoned with an artifact, a flaming artifact. This is a building that we can see from where we started. We could have come down here by going down rather than up. See? That's where we started. We could have come down rather than up. Nothing in that building, by the way. At first glance, this building doesn't appear to be much, but of course there is a basement. There's a basement with a one-way drop-off into water, a one-way door that we can't open, and a staircase up in a really awkward location, which leads to... What? What are we looking at? Well, this is the back entrance. This is the thing that exploded. Now, there's no way to know where this is on the outside of, of the station from here. We can't tell what we're looking at. We can't tell that there's a hole we can park at. Nothing like that. So, if we wanted to add in some backups, some safety nets. One way to do it would be to have an actual physical hole in this, like this center column here. We could have the hole go all the way out into space, and then we would be able to see the stars from here. That would be a tremendous help uh, in terms of, you know, giving us something to fall back on because we would be able to see that there was a hole all the way out into space. Um, obviously, this is where we come in when we come in through the back door. There are a number of puzzles here that don't have a clear backup, and that means, or no, a clear safety net. And that means that there are quite a few times when we're going to be trying to accomplish something, and we're going to have to get it right in the specific way that the game wants us to get it right, in the specific way that they want us to get it right at the specific time. So it's like, that's a little bit strict. It's a little bit linear. In the main game, there were many safety nets, You'll find that uh, whenever you solve a complex puzzle, behind it will be the solution to a simpler puzzle that, um, you know, you might have overlooked. You might not have noticed that that simpler solution existed. So they're telling you at the end of a complex puzzle to go back and do this simple puzzle if you overlooked it. But that doesn't really exist in Echoes of the Eye, and it's one of the big weaknesses. And the reason for that weakness is partially because there's no text. We can't translate any of the text. In the main game, there's lots of text, and you can read up on the thoughts of the ancient species that came before us, and they'll explain some of their puzzles to you while you're there. And they'll talk about, oh, remember back on Giant's Deep when we did that cool thing? And, you, and they'll be like, yeah, I remember that cool thing. Whereas here, you just, you just can't do that. There's no text. Another problem is that the ship's logs are just not as helpful in this game. They're still much, much better than in any other adventure game, but this game doesn't have the same level of helpfulness that uh, the ship's log, ship log had when it was in the main game. The main game had uh, really aggressively helpful ship logs. This game has good ship logs for the physical world, and then they kind of taper off when you go into the spirit world. And that's... Where did this... Oh, here it is. Oh. 
and that's just not not as good for me. I wish that they had been a little bit better with their um, safety nets, both in terms of ship logs and in terms of revealing solutions for puzzles that you might not have done when you were passing through the area. Uh, this is something where you're supposed to take photos. So this is the other ravine. There are two ravines. Now you might remember this one. This is where you can waste your time when you're headed over to the reservoir. I said there was a busted bridge and you could waste two or three minutes trying to figure it out. That's because you're not supposed to get here via the busted bridge. You're supposed to get here from the other ravine. But where is here? It looks like it's some kind of incinerator room because it's got a picture of a Pokemon. That picture of a Pokemon is actually a picture of a slideshow going up in flames. So this is the most disappointing area, in my opinion, because this entire building is the only thing in this side of the ravine. And there's no puzzle here. I say there's no puzzle. Um, there is something to do, but it's not a puzzle. So first off, this door leads straight back into here. Just in case you were wondering, that's where that comes from. But in this entire chapel, there is only one thing to do, and that is to enter a key code, I mean a combination lock. This is what we need in order to open this area up. And so far, we've been taught that these combination locks are often kept in the same area where we find the lock itself, because that's what happened back at the reservoir. We found our way in by using this bad boy to take pictures where we couldn't actually normally see. But no matter how long you look, how hard you search, you're not going to find the combination here. You can't do anything here until you have the combination. Which means this entire ravine, this, you know, one-tenth of the entire physical world has a single thing in it that is not even a puzzle. The puzzle is back in the second village. This entire area, front to back, nothing and i just that feels wrong to me it feels like you should be able to do more here uh then maybe there should be some other things to do here there's a couple of places i feel like that um for example when we were talking about the um uh, uh the uh the dam and i went into the dam and i said that it felt a little bit strange that's the same sort of thing. I feel like the dam is an unusually huge place with almost nothing in it, and I feel the same way about this. <sighs> it's not bad, it's just unusually sparse. Usually you expect a higher density of puzzles, you know? Anyway, at the end of the day, the point of this whole area is to finish off the first chapter and open up the second chapter. Once you've found the external entrance, it leads you right here, and you can start exploring these dream worlds extremely aggressively. That can be your main goal. And that is uh, where the second chapter starts and how this area supports the second chapter, and this is one of the last safety nets in the game. We'll talk more about my opinions on that later, but I'm sure you've already got a pretty clear idea. In the next episode, we will go ahead and uh, find that back entrance. See you there.